I think the legacy issue is very important, and that starts with a Isaac Harmon, because he owned actually somewhere between eight and 900 acres of land. When he died, he left the 800, 900 acres to his sons. My great-grandfather was one of the sons, Noah Harmon. It was at that point in time largely a community uh, structure. You had uh, church-oriented activities on weekends, and the audience was largely multiracial in that it was black and colored. Colored at the particular time was the reference used for people from this area as opposed to Nanticoke Indians because they were not recognized as descendants of Indians until 1881. At that particular time, they were considered colored. We weren't welcomed in Oak Orchard or a lot of other places where the white people went because we were of mixed blood. My mother was white and I get the Native American part from my father. And going back to what you asked me about what attracted me there, what was so special, it was a place for us, our people. We weren't wanted in a lot of places at the time because of segregation. So that's where we all gathered and that's where we partied, that's where we had fun. In the 1920s, actually 1927, Noah Harmon sold the property to Dale Street and Rosetta Street. And that's how it got the name Rosedale. And then in 1937, Jesse Balls from Berwyn, Pennsylvania, bought the property. He was a great guy, Jesse Voss. For him to come along and build this big, fabulous hotel and bring all this entertainment into a no-known spot, but he brought it all here. He proceeded to build a new hotel, 1946, which had 32 rooms. Dining room had all the amenities, and it was very lavishly structured. I mean, it was first class. The whole place was first class. He had a beautiful dining room, white tablecloths, he had a chef in the kitchen that wore the chef's outfit with the chef's hat. Like I said, everything was first class with this guy. And he was friendly. He didn't walk around with his nose stuck up because he had something. He was friendly to everyone. He became a part of the Chitlin circuit, which means he brought in entertainment. At that particular time, which in 1944, for example, Lionel Hampton was at Rosedale. And then in the 50s, you had Ella Fitzgerald, you had Duke Ellington, you had Ray Charles, you had Stevie Wonder. And I can remember times, Stevie Wonder, you've heard of Stevie Wonder? We're, we're the same age, he and I. I'm 79 and he's also 79 right now. And I used to walk right up to the stage. Of course, he was blind, he couldn't see me. And I used to stand up there and look at him. And he would be playing his harmonica and singing. And one day I reached up and I took his hand. But after I got his hand, it, you know, I shook it a little bit. And I was just a, nine years old. I was probably nine years old, right? And he cracked a smile, and that was it. But things, things like that, you know, I'll never forget. I guess the thing that means the most to me is the fact that being a descendant of the Harmon family and growing up during that particular period, you felt a sense of pride. You felt a sense of being somebody because people from all over the state of Delaware and even Washington DC and Baltimore came by bus, tour buses, to Rosedale. And it was like we had something. And that was something that a lot of people at that particular time of color did not have. And we just felt like we were important. It made us feel good about ourselves and about the community. And that's really what's significant, really.